It feels right here. I know. Like, I don't know, like something really special could happen here in this house. Does that sound no, silly? No, or? it doesn't, no, it's a... Uh... Why don't... Do you know what we should do? We should leave all the doors open. Oh, right, like... I just mean a house where, where no door is ever closed. Why are we closing them? I don't know. No, you're right, that's a, that's a good idea, yeah. What are we hiding? Are we embarrassed? I'm not embarrassed. Why should I be embarrassed? You shouldn't be embarrassed. You... It's worse than that, actually. It's shame. We're ashamed of the perfectly natural things that human beings do to be human, that we want to hide away. Uh, am I embarrassed of my body because it doesn't look the way that bodies look in magazines? Do I not want people to see the way I look when I sleep? People need to sleep. It's for a... they think it's for privacy, you know, to be with your thoughts or... Privacy isn't a space, it's a state of mind. Yep, sorry. What for? We're not arguing, we're just talking. I know, I, know. I just feel... I... Uh, that doesn't matter. It's okay. What? Uh, I wish I thought the way you thought sometimes, that, that's all. My God. What? Your eyes? How can you be given eyes like that when other people just get dead stones? It isn't fair. I can hardly bear it. I don't know. <laughs> what were you going to say? Um, I don't remember. Uh, the, the doors. If, if, if we uh, do, we, uh, we could knock them down or we could burn them, actually. Well, then bugger it. The walls. The walls. Let's knock, knock down, down the walls. The walls. <laughs> God. What? Just you. What about me? Your level of... Um, What's the word when you have the words to describe something well? Uh, articulate? Articulate. So, see, I couldn't even articulate the word articulate. That's how inarticulate I am sometimes, and, and it sometimes it scares me. Don't be scared. Oh, I shouldn't have dropped out of Cambridge. You know, that was stupid. I should have stayed and learned and... See, you went to Cambridge. They don't let inarticulate people into Cambridge. It's politics. Everything is politics. Yeah, everything <laughs> is political. Not everything is politics. See, that... Jim! That was articulate. Oh, I really love this. <laughs> Talking to you, you are brilliant. I love you. I love you. How's Dan? Fine. Did you tell him you were seeing me? No. Do you cut off his crusts? What? Do you cut off his crusts? Look, what do you want? I want my negatives. What's your latest project, Anna? Derelict buildings. Oh, how nice, the beauty of ugliness. <laughs> what are you doing with Larry? Everything. I like your bed. You should come round one night and watch your husband blubbering into his pillow. It might help you develop a conscience. I know what I've done. His big thing at the moment is how upset his family are. They all worship you and they can't understand why you had to go and ruin it. He spends hours staring at my asshole, like there's gonna be some answer up there. Any ideas, Anna? Why don't you go back to him? What, and then Dan will go back to you? Maybe. Ask him. I'm not a beggar. Dan left you, I didn't force him to You go. made yourself available, don't weasel out of it. Screwing Larry was a big mistake. Yeah, well, everyone screws Larry around here. Oh, she's even beautiful when she's angry. The perfect woman. Oh, just fucking stop now it. Now we're talking. Why now? Why come for me now? Because I felt strong enough. It has taken me five months to convince myself that you are not better than it's me. It's not a competition. Yes, it is. I don't want to fight. <laughs> so give in. Why did you do this? I fell in love with him, Alice. Oh, that is the most stupid expression in the world. I fell in love as if you had no choice. You didn't fall in love. You gave in to temptation. Well, you fell in love with him. No, I chose him. I looked in his briefcase and I found this sandwich and I thought, I will give all my love to this charming man who cuts off his crusts. I didn't fall in love. I chose to. Do you still want him after everything that he's done to you? You wouldn't understand. He... What 
are you hiding from? Everything. <laughs> That's too easy, Alice. That's the cop out of the age. <laughs> yeah, well, you're old. I am sorry. I had a choice and I chose to be selfish. I'm sorry. Everyone's selfish. You should lower your expectations. Well, that's easy for you to say. <laughs> I'm not being patronising, but you are a child. You are being patronising. And you are a child. I've got to go. Don't forget your negatives. Yeah, thanks. Do the right thing, Anna. We had a fight, we had an actual fight in the living room. Fucking hell. I mean, I sort of won, but you know, he's, uh, he's pretty old, so. Afterwards, we were sitting there on the floor. My dad with a, a split lip, carpet burn up his face, shirt open, belly out, just like, not his best. And we were sitting there just staring at each other across the room there. And that seemed to do it, actually. Just like, just looking, going, yeah, I'm here to. Next day, we left the house. We sold it a few months later. Some old couple, London, next to nothing. And then, uh, I don't know, Just we just, we just got here, somehow. Little things, chat, pint, look at each other, remember her, miss her. I miss her. Every day, I have no idea where she is. And I feel like I should hate her, but I don't. I just miss her. And that's the only bit which never goes away. And that's all right. Is she here? Who? Lily, mum, our mother, is she here? Mum? Yikes, no. Should she be? Are you absolutely sure? Well, yes, I'm sure. Why so serious? She's missing again. Oh, is that all? Oh, relax. She'll turn up. She did last time. I know, but... And the time before that. No need to get your suit in a twist. Do you even know what day it is? It's Tuesday. No. Thursday? No, it's definitely Tuesday. Maybe it's even Friday. Is it Friday? Oh, forget it. Shouldn't you be in London anyway? I thought you had a, a vote. Or did the treehouse give you the day off, as it's a Friday and all? It's a fucking Tuesday. Oh, I knew it! Let's go with your first instinct. How did you know I had a vote? Why follow it sometimes? It's always fun to see the big bro on the box. You're so tiny, like an angry thumb. <laughs> I must say, it's very exotic to have you up these parts. Now that you're so urbane, I think you mean urban. What? Urban, not urbane. Do they have any idea? Your constituents, what manner, what literal, actual manner you spring from? <laughs> well, it's a twisting irony that after so many years of people trying to ferret their way up the socioeconomic scale, you'd like nothing more than to slither all the way down it. If she turns up here, go to the payphone in the village. Why the hell are you back here anyway? Isn't it term time? It's the middle of the week. Don't you have classes? Don't, don't you have something, anything else to do? Well, I'm working, actually. I'm composing a theme tune. A theme tune to what, exactly? Well, my fantastic life now. Sod off. Hold on. I get it. You finally got kicked out, didn't you? I left, actually. That's why you're back here in the middle of term. Ran home to the castle, reinstalled yourself. Glass in one hand, cock in another. I was not kicked out. We came to a mutual agreement. Well done. 
One hand clapping in a fucking forest yet again. I hate how you make me this person. We could go fishing. Well, shooting even. Hold on, I forgot you renounced all that. <laughs> treehouse rules. Stop calling it that. The House of Commons is not a fucking treehouse. Well, it sort of is, if you think about it. When your boys were their toys up high. I said to myself, on the way over here, if you were here, we weren't gonna do this. And we're not. We're just not, okay? Well, off your foot then! I'll let you know if she turns up. Let me know how exactly. By fucking carrier pigeon? Can you even get to the payphone in the village? Where are your shoes? I don't like shoes! Oh, how bohemian of you. Hold on. Can you hear that? What? You can hear it really faintly. I, th I think it's... Hold on. Is that faint crying? Where? Who? I can hear a really faint mewling. I think it's the state crying for its nanny. <laughs> Time to go, don't you think? Oh, get a job, Robin. This place holds you back. It's sad, actually. Don't get too used to it up here, Princeling. Remember, this isn't just your house, and it never will be. If she turns up, call me. Ollie? What? Fuck off, then. What an asshole. Um, yeah. Although, I mean, he's right, kind of, you know? But kind of harsh, kind of like he's high on money or power. Right. Or crack. No, not crack. More like money. Oh. OK. Sounds like you are familiar. With money? No, not at all. No, no. With you know, crack. It's weird. No one ever talks about this side of it, but I, I hear it's a lot of fun. And the other drugs, the really serious ones, the scary ones. Yeah, well, sure, of course they're fun. Why else would they possibly be so popular when they'll usually end up costing you all your money and family and happiness? Wow. They're magical. Everything shitty in your life is just gone. Suddenly you're smart and sexy and strong and on top of it all, on top of the world, the king of all you survey. Wow. Yeah. From crack? Yeah. Did you do it a lot? Yes. Yes, I did. Yeah? <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad to be done. Oh, good. When did you stop smoking crack? Oh, a long time ago. Oh. This is better. Realer. Good. Better. Really? What? This is better than crack. This is better than crack, really? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, but hey, don't do it. What? Crack. Seriously, like, don't ever ever do it i wasn't planning on them. you can't imagine what a bad idea it is i mean don't get me wrong it's great it's awesome for the moment but it will ruin your life forever they're terrible all of them the drugs the food the games the pain relievers the pleasure givers they're all just numbing agents we don't need ways out we need ways in further in further into life, and that's where we need to go.
Well, explain to me why the minute we went to high school you wouldn't be seen dead with me. I walked home with you every day. And because none of your proper mates live round here. Proper mates? I hated them. Hated them? You are a ball with Steve Lyons and Matt Jones and all that lot of no marks. What are they doing now? I hope they're rotting away in bedsits, lonely and self-loathing and riddled. I never bullied you. <laughs> Remember when we were 13? Jeanette Middleton rang you at home and your mum answered the phone and she said you were in bed. But you might not be asleep yet. You might be reading in bed. And then Jeanette started telling everyone and after that, your nickname was Susie, Susie Dent. Dent. Yeah. Well, it was me that gave you that nickname to stop them calling you something crueler. Like when you called me a freak lesbian vile dwarf cunt. You showed your true colours then. Yeah, I don't know what to say. I believe sorry is traditional. Look, 15 year old lads, they're all dickheads. They've got to be to fit in. You can't get by if you don't fit in. Are you bollocks? John Cragglefish. <laughs> Remember we had that bag that was slightly bigger than normal. They gave him hell for it. That's how it works for lads. You do anything a bit weird, you get battered. Show any weakness and you get battered. Show you care about anything and you get battered. What, and, and being a woman is a toddle, isn't it? Especially me. Well, you're allowed to be clever. You're allowed to be weird. You can be anything you want. Women earn 15% less than men. Yeah, stop being statistics, out there. I just happen to know more than you. No, you fucking don't. I can't believe you say that. You're a selfish, arrogant cow. Selfish? My mum bought you Christmas presents. We took you to Blackpool every year. On your birthday. I had to lie to my mum about you ignoring me in school. I pretended it was fine for five years because I didn't want to let her know her golden boy was a cunt. Yeah, well, you can't be mates with a girl in high school. Especially one like me. Me? Well, you can't be friends with scabby little lads in primary school, but I was. You had scabies in school, Sean. You had fleas. Every day, you pestered me for the tinfoil off my butty because you wanted to make sculptures out of it for your mum to make her love you. When I was little, I never realised how weird that was. It was my mum who explained it to me. Tinfoil, she said to me with her eyes wide. Why did we have to buy Sean his dinner half the time? Why did I buy him school shoes and take him to Blackpool with us? And then she told me, your mum was a junkie and she loved smack more than she loved you. Fuck. Off. Do you know how it felt? Your mum helping me. Someone who gave a shit. Made you tea and cared. Do you know what I thought was going to happen? I thought she did give a shit. I thought she was going to have me living at yours. And then what happens next? Oh, oh, sorry, Sean. But my daughter's future is too important. It's her exams. You need to think about her exams. Yeah, how stupid was that? <laughs> you can get your prescription on your own. Fuck off. Sean. We have to talk about it. Why? Because it happened. Lots of things happen we don't talk about. Babies born in China. Every minute there's a baby born in China and you never say, I never say, hey, just now we're in Beijing. If we don't talk about it, something really bad is going to happen. Something really bad has happened. Let's think this through. No! You need to talk to your dad. You need to find him and tell him he is out of line. And you find your mum and tell her. No, it's him we need to talk to. They were both there. My mum didn't start it. How do you know? There is no way she'd be attracted to him. Did you see her? I saw him. What's that supposed to mean? He was pulling her hair. People do sometimes. It doesn't mean anything. I should detect him. I should go and find him now. She looked like she was having fun. <laughs> Bollocks. Are you saying he forced her? 
No. Really? No, I'm not saying that. <laughs> because it sounded a lot he like... He just takes, like, it's his right. He thinks everyone's fair game, even my mum. You've got this massive blind spot about your mum and you just don't see she was there yeah, too. Yeah, but she didn't want it. And even if she did, she would not have done it. She is not like him, just taking, 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 not like him, not thinking, not considering, just grabbing what he wants. What's wrong with grabbing what you want sometimes? It's selfish. It, it's completely wrong. At least it's honest. Sometimes I wish you'd turn your head off, grab what you want. You don't. Sometimes I wish you'd make decisions. Choose wine. Open <laughs> doors, drive a car, operate a drill, eat steak, be a bit more rapey when we go to bed. I didn't mean that. Steve, I didn't mean to say that. But you did? It just came out of my mouth. It wasn't what I mean. Uh, I thought you changed. I have. You want me to eat steak? I don't. You're a vegetarian. I know. You've been a vegetarian for 10 years. I know. You want me to be a bit more rapey? I hate this. I didn't want to talk. You wanted to talk. Don't yell at me for using the wrong words. That's repulsive to use such a, a cutesy diminutive for the most violent, revolting act. You say you could murder a drink? You're the one. You're the one that says that. You have not changed. I have. I have. You've got to trust <laughs> me. You are not the person I thought you were. This is why we shouldn't talk. We're making it worse. Let's get some more to drink. Let's find them if we have to. I'd rather stick pins in my eyes, but if you want to. Steve. You're not saying anything. Don't give me the silent treatment, not now. You wanted to talk, I'm talking, Steve. Uh, I think I'm gonna leave. I, I think I have to go. Go where? Uh, just go. What do you mean, just go? Just leave. What do you mean, leave? We're fucking married now. For 90 minutes? Did you just check your watch to see how long we're married for? I'm sorry. This is supposed to be the happiest day of my life. I I'm sorry. I woke up on a lake of fire. Darkness visible was all I could see as I vied with the pain of inexhaustible torment. And breathed in the stench of burning sulfur, charred flesh, singed hair and melted wings. My cries joined the chorus of agony, bellowed by a cry of my fallen compatriot. As I stared down the endless tunnel which we'd been hurled, cursing the Almighty for sentencing us to hell. I mean, wouldn't you? Hmm? Oh, I know it's been a long time since you were driven through the gates of paradise by a malicious, unforgiving God. But somewhere deep inside you do remember. You should be thanking me, really. I liberated you from the banality of bliss. I released you from the beigeness of contentment. I freed you from the blind obedience to a psychopathic dictator, to a deranged monarch, to a bloodthirsty general. You're welcome. So where's my parade? Huh? Don't you celebrate leaders who unshackle themselves from the gross hands of oppression? I am a freedom fighter. I am Moses, Gandhi, Mandela, Malala, why I am a regular Dr. King. If I had won the war in heaven, if I had the chance to write the goddamn book, you'd be celebrating me. Statues, churches, holidays, 
You could ask me infinite questions about my divine plan. I'd applaud your curiosity, your skepticism, your doubt. Not kick you out of your homes and sentence you to an eternity of suffering and sulk in a cloud because no one makes burnt offerings anymore. But instead, I took the fall. I was the one who was blamed, just like you are all being blamed for this miserable state we're now in. Hmm? Where have you been? Here for Michelle. I called you. Oh. It was on silent. <laughs> was it anything important? The bedroom smells funny. Does it? What of? Mold. I told you that months ago. You said I was imagining it. And there's a smudge on the wall. By the headboard? Is there? Or a stain. Maybe it's a poltergeist. <laughs> Why have you been calling Tim? I haven't been calling him. Really? Yes. <laughs> I called Tim this afternoon. He didn't answer. Should we see if he answers your calls? Call him. What? Okay, I'll call him. Now you call him. No. Why not? Because he's gonna think it's fucking weird. You're being fucking weird. <laughs> Hi Tim. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. I'm I'm just calling because uh, Grace thinks I'm having an affair with you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, sorry about that. Enjoy the cricket. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye. It's him, isn't it? What are you talking about? You're being a prat. It's him. I've been through your phone. It's empty. No texts, no cool records. I decluttered it. There's a load of wine left open from the other night. We should throw it away. I haven't cheated on you for five years. Congratulations. What anniversary is that? I'm guilty or guilty. <laughs> Either I've cheated on you and deserve punishment or I cheated on you five years ago and deserve punishment. Can we just run this by ourselves? I've known Tim for nearly 10 years. I've never fancied him. He's been single all this time. Why would I start having an affair with him now when he's with Zara? Why would I do it? I'd be risking everything. It doesn't make sense. Because he saw his chance <laughs> and he fucking took it. Fuck you, Grace. You're being fucking poisonous. Oh yeah, that's a really good one. The power of being offended, it's sort of unanswerable. Own up to your fucking feelings. You're bored. You don't want to have sex with me anymore. All right. How about I wanted you to understand how it felt? Why? You're not in love with him, are you? Well, that's fucked things up, hasn't it? That's not fair, is it? You know what? You haven't been here for weeks. You've already gone. That's why the bedroom feels empty. He's stolen you, the fucking thief. Christ! Oh, I want to be sick. I'm sorry. Can I go on the computers later? You're not going on without doing some good work. Can't I go on now? Nope. I beg you do. No, Daryl. Why? Because, because it's a privilege. You don't know, do you? I'm trying to tell Except you. Except you don't, though. Daryl, sit down. How about if I sit down at the computer? Nope. Why? Because, all right, listen. Uh, how about we do 10 minutes of concerted work now? On the computers? Let me finish. 10 minutes of excellent work now, and I'll set you a project so that you can use the internet. Will you write down that I did good in my homework book? Yes. Will you tell Godzilla? Daryl. Head of year, the beast. I'll tell the head of year you did well. And then can I go back into class? I'll talk to her, Daryl, but I don't think you Why? 
I don't you know why. Shit agency, man. <sighs> I mean, sir, Kieran don't even care anymore. Believe. I never even bit him that hard. Barely left a mark, you get me? Daryl, that is not the point. Ask him, bro. Ask Kieran if he's bothered. Daryl. Call him. Uh, put your phone away, Just give away, him a ring, innit? A ring of ding zinger. Uh, Am I boring you? Well, no, no, I just... Uh, Keeping you up, agency? I just haven't had as much sleep lately. <sighs> Whatever. Daryl, sit down, please. <sighs> I'm pacing, let a man walk. Daryl, sit down. What harm am I doing, though? Daryl. What harm, though? Daryl. What harm, though? Sit! Now! I am not in the mood today, okay, Daryl? I'm gonna count to ten. One. Two. Three. Gosh, man, why are you so dry? <laughs> Four. Why are you always act like you got a stick up your ass? Five. Is it because you had a breakdown on your old job? Sat in the garage with the engine running? Six. It is, isn't it? You went a bit... Seven. Girl in the upper school's cousin used to work with someone who knew you. And she said something about why you can't be a proper teacher, just agency or whatever, because you went Fruit Loops. Says you thumped your girl, had a breakdown at work, went skits on your bird, made you jack it in, that's what I reckon. I am warning you. Why'd you do that for? Why'd you hit your girl for? Shut up! Nobody's supposed to know that, is they? But you going all Bobby Brown. Wouldn't have got the job otherwise. Shut up! Or what? You gonna give me a smack? Gonna lick me in my head, I'd love to see that. Shut up! You best raise your weight. Sit down! Step up, pussy! Show me some skills. Sit on the fucking chair! Shut up! Shut up, you fucking! Sit on the chair! Sit on the fucking chair! Freak! Fuck up! Fucking stupid fucking! I didn't think we used those kind of words, sir, man. Can I put that you're satisfied with how your case has been handled so far? No, you can't. Oh, that's a shame. Why is that? Well, I'm not satisfied. This has been a complete shambles. The two goons that came to arrest me, they ate my sushi. They shouldn't have done that. And were you dissatisfied or deeply dissatisfied? No, look, that's not the issue. The, I the have point to one or the other. Deeply dissatisfied. But, but look, my passport isn't working. I've got a phone that mm, I can't I use. I can't let any of this, though, I'm afraid. Why not? Because they happen to everyone. It's not specific to your case. I can only log the specifics. I guess I could log the sushi eating. <laughs> yes, right. OK, let, let's log the sushi eating. Right, damage to goods. What does that mean? Basically what was eaten. Half a California roll and some prawns. Do you know how many? No. I'll put ten. No, less than that. They were, um, you know, king prawns. King prawns? Yeah. How do they know that? It's a type of prawn. Right. So damage to goods, estimate value. Uh, California rolls 450. So 225 then, if they ate half. Yeah, but I didn't want the other half, did I? They, they damaged the whole thing. Oh, right, I see. So 450 plus five king prawns, whichever value of? I don't know, say a pound each. So total damage to goods. 9.50? 9.50. That's been logged. Would you like a reference number? No, th this is all, this is irrelevant, okay? The sushi isn't the issue. Well, that's been logged. The arrest so. is the issue. I want to complain about the arrest. Yeah. You can't, I'm afraid. Well, what's the fucking point then? Is there anything else we can help you with today? What do you mean helped? You haven't helped. We've done all that we no, can. No, you've done fuck all. We'd rather you didn't swear. What? I... Swearing counts as abusing staff. It's a form of abuse. No, no, people swearing isn't the issue. It sort of is. Like, you should think about why they swear at you. Lack of vocabulary. No, no, no. People swear at you because of all the hoops you make them jump through to clear up for your mistakes. That's why they swear at you. Yeah, I, I had to call the doctors the other day to make an appointment. That's and more it took the me NHS three thing. hours of constantly phoning up before I got through to someone. Three hours! I can't log any of this. I know, I know, because it's symptomatic of wider problems, of, of people being treated like shit. I hear o that. Of you people not exercising common sense, and of people not treating other people with a degree of dignity. I mean, come on. Is that too much to ask for? We can't log wider issues. I know you can't fucking log them, you fucking idiot! Please help me out! I... I'm trying. I know how you feel. Do you? Do you? Have you had any of this happen to you? 
oh no, I've been in a course, I have a H and D in empathy. But that's not the same though, is it, as knowing about anything though, is it? Well, I can understand why you'd say that. I had a minor crush on Justin Rogers ever since the first day of Sesame School. When I say minor, <laughs> I mean I'd memorize his school timetable and make sure that I was outside the threat classroom at all times. He once broke both of his arms and had to leave class five minutes early to be the rough of people. I also left early because of my water. This meant five minutes alone time in the outer corridor of the science block with Justin Rodden. Every Tuesday, I'm better for <laughs> When his arm healed, I considered having a hip pad in year 11 to take out his ankles. <laughs> anyway, word on street was that Justin was interested in me. It was so exciting. I never kissed anyone at this point. It was awkward, but we did finally kiss. There was no fireworks, no foul of music, but there was a very notable change in attitude. Justin Rodden looked at me. And I looked back, oh, and there was silence. <laughs> what is that? A sofa? Why? I bought us a new sofa. Huh? It's the one you wanted. Is it? I saw the contract. What contract? On the table. <laughs> what is that I can smell? Cassoulet. Fuck off. Fuck on. Oh, I love <laughs> Cassoulet. I know. <laughs> it's serious money. What is? The contract. I'm not going to do it. What? They sent it to me to try and persuade me with more money, but I've already decided I'm not going to do it. It's 40 grand. Well, you've already written the play. You just need to turn it into a film. I don't want to do it. Is that why you bought a sofa? It's a present. You wanted the sofa. A sofa? I don't think I've ever wanted a sofa. Well, you said when we were at Joe and Pete's, you pointed at it and went, oh, nice sofa. I was just saying words. We were making shit up. Right. Are you okay? I didn't mean to upset you. I just didn't know that you loved sofas. I thought you loved sofas. It was a present. It was nearly 2,000 pounds. What is wrong with you? What's wrong with me? You spent 2,000 pounds on a sofa. I thought it was a nice idea. I just don't want to do the job. It's okay for me to not want to do the job. People have to do their jobs. That's what happens. You get a job and you have to do it. You don't have to do your job if you don't want to. We need to buy a house. We didn't need to buy a house yesterday. Why won't you do it? Because the story when I wrote it was true. And if I turn it into a film, the producers will twist it into something that isn't true and that will hurt. It's a story. But it doesn't matter. No, go on. Try to explain. I'm listening. It's like letting strangers do plastic surgery to unborn child to make it more fuckable. Vivid. 
And then once they're done fucking it and it comes out dead, they can't understand why there's no love or life or magic in your story. It's a job. That's how you make your money. Th there's rent to pay. I've covered your rent three times this year and not once asked you to cover mine. Are you ever going to let that go? You can't just write plays forever. Can't I? You'll be poor. Oh, were you hoping your investment was going to mature? <sighs> no, I... You're always going to ship things. Well, I'll get promoted. I... I'm getting promoted. That's great. Well, don't say it like that. It is great. I said it like it was actually great. Well, who doesn't want to get promoted? What do you mean? Promoted. I'm a writer. Oh, to films, to films. <sighs> to 40 fucking grand. That is a promotion. Take the promotion. I don't want it. Why not? Is it a lack of confidence? <laughs> is it because you believe you can't do it? No. It's because I'm already rich and livid and dumping with myth and a deep-seated sense of what I'm supposed to do in this world before I die. Congrats. You're not wishing me good luck, Greg. I know you. You're wishing the guy gets a bone stuck in his throat or something. Yeah, but I hope you have a good time. And you can always kill his pets if you don't. That's, I mean, I know we went through a bit of shit there recently, a few crappy months or whatnot, but it doesn't hurt to wish another person well. Okay. Okay, what? <laughs> Why do you always answer me with something so, God, so fucking abstruse in response to what I say to you? Why do you do that? Uh, Steph, you know what? I, I don't even know a word that could describe that word, let alone what that one means. So I doubt I'm being that. And, and you know what? I read a lot. Uh, so I'm trying that's... to make a life for myself, okay? Knock yourself out. And it's just like impossible for you to wish me happiness, right? For you to hope that might happen to me. You're at a good restaurant. I can only imagine you're with some decent guy who's gonna treat you well and thinks you're the fucking apple of his eye. But don't be surprised if he tries to get in your panties if you're ordering anything more than the lasagna. You're such a prick. <laughs> That's even classier when you're wearing a dress. It's nice. Oh, fuck you. I'm trying to look pretty, all right? I'm trying to make myself feel better because my former boyfriend, this guy that I gave a whole lot of my heart to, couldn't find me attractive and left me wondering what's wrong with me. Well, why I'm so unappealing to him. So yeah, I'm wearing a skirt tonight so that I feel a little sexier or cuter or, you know. <laughs> God, why the hell do you even care? I don't. Bullshit. Even now I can see you glancing down at my legs. You totally miss me, my body. Wow, you're going for the mother load tonight, huh? <laughs> Fuck's that mean? You want this new guy and me? Is that no. it? Approval from <laughs> the whole damn group? Well, you know what? Fine. I'll toss your bone if it makes you feel any better. You look wonderful. You do. But so what? You never wore any of that get up with me. So it doesn't exactly thrill me to tell you all that, build you up about your dress. It's new. And it's a skirt, not a dress. Bought for tonight, I suppose? <sighs> yes. Well, that's great. <laughs> you do the same thing. Really? Look at me. You recognise anything I've got on? Of course. Well then, I guess your little theory there is full of shit. Oh. So you are meeting someone then? Is that what you're saying? Maybe. I see. Is it that new girl? Hmm. That's terrific. At least I didn't get all dressed up for that. Oh, well, I guess that just makes you a slob then, doesn't it? And what does that make you? <laughs> No, don't. You, you can walk out on me for some, some perceived slight that I did you, some horrible judgment I made about your womanhood. You can swear at me and, and try to hit me, but you're not gonna be able to make it up with me anytime you want. Or, or call me when this miserable shithead you're out with tonight hurts you, because he is gonna, he's a guy, so it's a done deal. But you know what? I will not be there for you anymore. I won't be. Um. I'm going back to dinner now.
Catherine Gray. Have you had a good evening? Yes, it's been wonderful. They're all saying you're beguiling. There is no sun brighter than you, Your Majesty. Did you wear this dress when you were serving under Mary? Uh, I was told you wanted us to wear things that were slightly Do you more... like it? I mean, I chose it, so... I think it's very appealing. Everyone was looking. I'm glad you like it. I saw you with the Spanish ambassador. What? Sorry, uh, pardon. The smiling and the thing you do with your head slightly on one side to show you're listening and, and this little grin slightly off kilter to affect innocence. It's very charming. It makes him think you're impressed but don't really understand. So he just keeps speaking and speaking. I think that's just how my face works. There are women who will tell you that doing such things makes you look stupid. Really? They'll judge you harshly. You flirt to cover the fact you're not very interesting, is what they'll say. Well, that's sort of true, maybe. I'm terrible at books. My sister was better. Lady Jane? Yes. I think it's good that you have an effect on men. Is it? Do you miss your sister? I have this nightmare where I see her being executed all over again. How old was she? 17. They killed her because she reached for the throne. She was queen. For a couple of days, at least. I think it's wonderful that you're sparkly and smiley. And if you make an ambassador or two grin, brighten his day. Well, what can be the harm? There are people who call it witchery, the effect you have on men. I've never done anything to do with witchcraft ever, Your Majesty. I know. All I'm saying is it's a power, isn't it? It's like a game of chess. I don't know chess. I've tried to play, but I'm bad at it. <laughs> You're young and beautiful, and I think we should use that. Courtiers will give you information, and when they do, I want you to tell me, okay? I'm going to move you from the bedchamber to the presence chamber so you're more amongst it all. That's a demotion from where Mary placed me. Are you objecting? Was my sister's policy your preference? No, Your Majesty. Why don't you go back through? I think they're still dancing. Have some fun. What if they catch me? Listening? You're working for the Queen. No one can make you safer. You have such soft skin, like a peach. Catherine? Yes? Just talking. Take it no further. To fuck without my permission is treason. I need a favour. Right. It's pretty massive. I haven't got any money. No, I don't want your money. Good, because I haven't got any. I know. Listen. Go on then. Is Liza in? It's, it's two o'clock in the morning, Tobes. She's in bed. Sorry. How is she? How is she? How's she doing? She's asleep. No, I know. I'm in the, the bump and... Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, she hasn't got one yet. No, but... Yeah, yeah, I mean, early days, but yeah, good. I'm happy for you, mate. Really, I don't know if I said that. I mean, I wasn't sure when you told me at first. I was a bit like, ooh, it was pretty soon. I mean, we're still just kids ourselves, really, aren't we? But then we're not really, are we? People die younger than us. What are you going on about, Tobes? What do you need? Come on, spit it out. I need you to feel my balls. Please. What? I need a second opinion. What? It's only one, there's a little something. Go and see a doctor, man. I can't. Why not? They'll be closed. Well, well now. And yeah. I have had the same one since we were six. What doctor is that? Exactly him. No, he's all right, him. He, he... No, I know, but he gave me my asthma pump. So? So he used to give me a sticker for being good. I don't want to drop my pants in front of him. Why not? What about gear two stickers? Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is... <laughs> so, so you want me to feel your balls? 
I don't want you to. But yeah, what choice have I got? Dr. Azad. Please, Joff, you've seen them before. Across the room in the showers. It, yeah, but... Remember that time your brother put that fishing rod through your foot? Don't try. I mate. took it apart and I carried you to the hospital piggyback. Yeah, but you can't compare Please, that. Please, Joff. This is a living nightmare. Please, it'll take two seconds. Yeah, that's all you're getting. <sighs> Come on then. Drop trowel. What, what here? What if Liza comes in? Well, then I'll kill myself. Come on. Well, can't you just dip in? Oh, yeah, so I know. I'm sorry. You can't tell anyone this ever happened. Trust me. <sighs> all right. Come on then. I should give this to you. No, that's for you. I got that for you. I don't want it. But you love it. It's your favourite. Zeke, we're not dating. We're not a couple. Okay, let's start. Let's make it official. Zeke? I want to be your man, Maylene. I know you like me and I like you so hard I can hardly breathe. I like you so much I feel like there's lightning inside of me. You make me nervous, but you also make me calm. Really calm. Calm like how God must be calm, you know, from loving. I love you, Maylene. I love you. What do you think about that? Okay, look, I don't mean to sound conceited or anything like that, and you know I'm not like that anyway, but if you see the way you're looking at me right now, it's not like someone who doesn't like someone. So come on. What would you say? No. I'm going to be a singer. I'm going to be a star. No, and someday won't. soon, I'm going to make it out of here. And when I do, I can't have anyone distract me from I that. I won't distract you. Yes, you will. And it's sad because you're so gifted, you're so smart, and you just mess around with it. Like today, in class, you're supposed to get up and do your poem. You say that you want me, but you don't know what it is that you actually do want, but I do. And even if I was going to be with someone, which I'm not, I'm going to be with a man who has goals, who has a plan, not a boy, not you. Maylene, if you give it a chance. I don't love you, Zeke. I don't love you. You look really tired. Because I am tired. What are you doing at my house, Bonnie? Well, I wanted this to is see. Where I live. It, it's it's yes. birthday, and I'm having yes. a no. party. No, no. I know. Then why are you here? You seemed upset at the hospital after the surgery after it all, you seem very upset. A little girl died on my table. Of, of course I was upset. Right. Well, I wondered if you felt anything had gone wrong. Jesus Christ. What? Your glasses fell inside her, literally inside yeah, but her. but that wasn't why she died. Obviously it wasn't not. death by glasses. It wasn't like they stabbed any internal organs well, or anything. Really. They she would have just had an extra round of antibiotics. I didn't kill her. Well, you didn't save her. Fucking hell. Well, doesn't look excellent, does it? Sorry, hang on. Are you here to give me a disciplinary no. or a warning? No, no, or no. Did you follow me here? No. Did you drive behind me all the way from the hospital? <laughs> Obviously not. She died. I'm well aware that she died, but you didn't have to follow me home just to tell me I'm shit at my job. That is not why I'm here. Then why are you here? You invited me. The email. You sent it to loads of people, so perhaps you didn't mean to send it to me. Look, I... I bought wine. 
Happy birthday to you. I made this plan where I was gonna go work in all the best restaurants in the world, you know? Like, like I'm gonna go work in real kitchens. Like, fuck mom and dad's piece of shit, right? <laughs> and it sounds ridiculous, you know, me saying that now, but that's, that's, that's what I did. And I got the shit kicked out of me. And I separated herbs and I shucked oysters and clams and uni. And I cut myself and I got garlic and onions and peppers in my fingernails and in my eyes. And my skin was dry and oily at the same time. And I had these calluses on my fingers from all the knives and my stomach was fucked and it was everything. And a couple of years later, this funny thing happened, which is like, for the first time in my life, I felt like I found this, uh, this station for myself. And I was fast, I wasn't afraid, and it was clear. And I, I felt, I felt okay, you know? I knew which vegetables went together, proteins, temperature, sauces, all that shit. And when somebody new came into the restaurant Astage, I'd look at them like they were competition, like I'm gonna smoke this motherfucker. I felt like I could, like I could speak through the food. Like I could communicate through creativity and that kind of confidence, you know, like I was, like I was finally good at something. How long is it again? Two minutes. Okay. Ugh, I think I've got some of your pee on my thumb. Mm, crying about it. Okay, fair point. Oh shit, a blue line's come up. What? Oh no, wait. That always happens. What the fuck? Check the packet, Jane. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, it, oh, it's two blue lines. Two blue lines is what you've got to worry about. Jesus, don't do that. You've got to keep your head, Jane. I am. Oh, this is bullshit. Absolute bullshit. I don't like condoms. They're too small. Ruins moments. Fucking asshole. I like to see him wedged in here peeing on a stick. He doesn't have to. How fucked up is that? It's totally fucked up, the fuck stick. Prick ass. Still, you let him. Pardon? I'm just saying, you could have insisted, right? Whose side are you on? Yours! Okay, you're right, I'm a dick. <laughs> no. You need to fucking get a grip. Of course not. Stop being such a slut! You're not a slut! But so what? So what if you're a little bit slutty? Okay. Well, exactly. Why should you have to apologise for that? I'm not apologising. Too right. Time yet. No. Men are celebrated for their bountiful sexual encounters. Not long. Whereas me, me, how dare I derive pleasure from casual carnal liaisons? Don't look at it yet, just don't. Okay. Instead of, you know, posting millions and millions of photos of my wedding on Facebook because I'm a girl. A girl. <laughs> I'm so ditzy and clumsy, but it's totally adorable. I'm so cute. Oh, please, can you give me some hot sex tips? I really need them. Hum gently on his penis. Worship the penis. Bow down before the penis and give <laughs> thanks. We should, like, tackle this shit. Yeah, obviously. I'm being serious. Okay, really? The internet, a, a blog. Okay. Become all pervasive, unignorable. Everywhere. We could have a scathing editorial tone. That's also warm and engaging. Articulate and angry. A torrent of rage. But also somewhere to turn. If you don't know who the hell you are. Because why the hell would you know? Exactly! Fuck niceness. Fuck apology. Yeah. You and me will do it together. Yeah, 
Yes. Time's up. Jane, just what? Wait a moment. <laughs> Uh, what is this? It's a little something that my lawyer and agents drafted up, and I guess it's something they want us both to sign. Saying what? It's kind of like a non-disclosure agreement, but I guess that's a total formality now, since you're not writing about me. Dean, this is crazy. I'm not signing this. But you just said you're not writing about me. Obviously, I'm writing about you, Dean. After Gloria, you're the freaking face of the tragedy. It's unavoidable. Every news item features you or quotes you or- Right, but I don't think this says you can't write about me. It's more about what you write about me. And if you read it, you'll see it cuts both ways. We each basically get approval over how you appear. Say, you're not going to tell me what I can and can't write. You don't own this experience, Dean. You're aware of that? With all due respect, Kendra, don't I? Or at least a little bit more than you. You weren't there. You were at Starbucks. Nothing happened to you. But everything happened to you. Were Ma's last words to you? Or what about Gloria? Do you know what the look is like in a person's eyes right before they shoot themselves in the face? No, I didn't think so. But this is my lived experience, my actual life, and I can't just have you tarnishing it with your... With your... With my what? With your ambition, Kendra your greed. I cannot have you profiting off my trauma. Your trauma? You think I wasn't affected by this? How? Do you know what it was like to stand outside that building and see them cut away body bag after body bag and not know who was in what? I lost friends, Dean. Kendra, are you really going to sit here and tell me that you considered any of these people friends? And to be honest, if you hadn't excused yourself to Starbucks, Gloria would have killed you. But she didn't. And here we are, the survivors. When my boyfriend left me, all my friends said, what do you expect dating a Kwai Lo? Ah. Guai Lo. It means devil person, what we call white people. Sorry, that's not very nice. But when you start a fake war about opium and then colonize our country for a hundred years, you must expect a certain amount of lingering resentment. My mother said, Moi Fong, I told you not to date a Guai Lo. That story never has a happy ending. Look at Pocahontas. I said, Ma, I'm not bitter. Maybe it's fate. She said, Moi Fong. We are Cantonese. We don't believe in fate. We believe in punishment. I said, Ma, you're thinking of the Catholics. I'm not Catholic, by the way. Methodist. We're even stricter. Not even wine at communion. In the end, I asked myself, what would Jesus do? And so I looked at my horoscope because Jesus was born on December 25th, which makes him a Capricorn, just like me. The one in Time Out said to take a chance on someone close by. And so I asked Bradley out on a date. Bradley said he wanted to go to the ballet. I thought, okay, interesting choice. So he has culture. We went to a nice bar first. He ordered rosé, which matched the color of his shirt. And then I started telling him about my ex-boyfriend. And then he started telling me about his ex-boyfriend. And so I said, <laughs> sorry, maybe my English is uh, not very good, but when you say boyfriend, do you mean a friend who happens to be a boy? Or when I told my friends about this later, they said, duh, he took you to the ballet. How do people know these things, these clues? Life is hard enough without having to guess. Oh, Jesus! Where were you? I had things to do. I've been waiting for you all day. 
What did you let him in for? He wouldn't go away. He was hammering the door down. Fuck. And then he started going on about how much he missed me and how sorry he was and, and how nice I was and, and how sensible I was. And then he got frisky. Frisky? He started threatening me. So you let him in? Yeah. After he started threatening you, you let him in? Yeah. Have you got a mirror? I've got a compact. That's what I'll do. I was scared. I'm scared now. What were you thinking? He had a knife. I panicked. What sort of knife? Um, a little one with a uh, pearl handle. So he attacked you with a knife? He was about to. Did he or didn't he? I just... <laughs> he had a bad temper. He had that look about him in his eyes. He was going to snap. Has, uh, has he done anything like this before? No. Oh God, it was a complete surprise. Oh, you don't believe me, do you? Do you think I'm just being neurotic? Well, don't you? It was an accident. I didn't mean to hurt him. You hit him in the head. Oh, I was trying to stop him. What did him. I tell you about that, Lucy? You weren't listening, were you? I told you precisely what to do if there's a problem. We went through the whole procedure, but no, you had a better idea. Ah! I'll leave you alone for five minutes. Oh, don't go on about it. What are you doing? Phoning the police. <laughs> uh, they won't believe me. But this isn't a game. And it was your idea anyway. You told me to do it. I won't do a thing like that in a million years. Well, what are we going to do with him then? We could throw him in the river. No. Uh, we could uh, bury him <laughs> on Valham Common. It's a bit more appropriate and, oh. and easier. Oh, shut up. Just shut up. It's all winos and hookers. Nobody will find Look, it. we're not doing it. Why not? Because it's wrong. And we could get caught. And then I'll go to prison because it's my bar and my bat and I'm the oldest. How far is Ballon Common? Ten minutes in the car. Have you got a car? You never text me back. You never answer my calls. Sorry, what are you doing here? <laughs> Have you been following me? No, I always shop here at this time. You always shop at this vegan supermarket at 8 p.m. <laughs> what for? Corn, mainly. And when I do get through to you, you always just go on about how busy you are. I am, I don't see anyone. Work is really demanding. <laughs> That's not true. You're always out. What are you talking about? Like, where? <laughs> Can you stop looking at your phone? Sorry, I'm expecting a work call. Where? Olivia's party. She was leaving to go live in Moscow. Anna's dinner? It was hardly a dinner. There were seven guests. That's a party. Okay. <laughs> are you stalking me? No. I mean, yes. <laughs> I, I, I know you've just fallen in love with Blowjob <clears throat> Bike Shed, and I am really happy for you. It's just that... I, I feel a bit sad sometimes, and I feel left out. <laughs> I know you're texting him. Sorry, left out? From what? A threesome? <laughs> you're not left out. Well, you are from that. <laughs> We're in the honeymoon period. It'll all come falling apart soon, and I'll come crawling back to you. I love you. I'm always here for you. <laughs> How many emojis can he cram onto a screen? Look. <laughs> oh. oh, come on. You know what it's like. Apparently not. <sighs> Please. I wish I could, like you, be satisfied with the mundane minutiae of life. <laughs> what the fuck? No, you know, like, um, restaurants, <sighs> uh, girly nights out, nails, mm. 2.4 family or bourgeois <laughs> shit. <laughs> You're such a dick. No, no, it, this isn't about you. 
this, I just feel so futile. I, what am I, what am I? Get a job then. <laughs> Jesus, you've been educated enough. I just, I keep thinking about how I am a product of IVF. Oh, not this again. I shouldn't even be here. My mum had to try and try and this was the 80s. This was serious sci-fi shit then. I, if it was my grandmother's day, I wouldn't even be here. I wouldn't be born. Neither would most of us. Coughs kill people. No, this thought has embedded itself in me. I'm an experiment. A test tube baby. Yes, you are a test tube baby, but that's fine. An experiment that's gone wrong. A Frankenstein. A barren vessel. Never going to have children, just like my barren mother. Stop it. These thoughts, they're so negative. Oh my God. <laughs> the world has negative thoughts. <laughs> Look at the news for once. Everyone hates each other. Everyone lives in fear of everyone else, of being blown up on their way to work or of being shot at by a policeman for wearing a hoodie. It's depressing, but normal, sadly. Have you tried Xanax? <laughs> Hip, hip, hallelujah. I knew her heart-shaped head was a sign. I snatched that number out her hand and stared at it the whole way home. 079-3777-5380. I knew it off by heart. After three days of torturing myself, I punched the number in and wait. It rings out. I'm like, oh well, at least I tried. Then the phone rings back. Chloe XX on the caller ID, yes, yes. <coughs> Chloe, eh? So, uh, what does your name mean? She asked me what was up with that random ass question and we laughed. I eased up and that's how things remained. We spoke about Christ and how we felt his second coming was upon us. We spoke about cosmetology, the space-time continuum and its apparent dimension. We even spoke about comics, even though she was DC and I was Marvel. I love her. It's perfect, we're perfect. Too perfect. Truth is, sooner or later, she'll come to the realization that she's just too good for me, right? And she'll be right because she's incredible and deserves to be. I'm afraid that she'll only break my heart. But I've grown so accustomed to nourishing myself in pain that deep down inside, I might actually want her to. It's actually a lovely story of them getting together. They'd, uh, they'd been going down the line every Thursday, Friday and Saturday getting pissed, but they never actually met. And when they first got together, they realised three separate times they'd been involved in the same mass brawls, but they never actually set eyes on each other. Oh, amazing. Isn't it? How did they meet in the end then? Internet dating. <laughs> <laughs> Add a lovely day. Yeah, me too. I best be off then. Well, if you want. Jordan will be wondering. Probably. Maybe not. Maybe wouldn't have even noticed. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I hope we can do this again. Yeah. Well, in a bit then. See ya. Wait, 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 is that it? Is that what? Is, is that how our day ends? In a bit. See you, it's pretty standard. So, hasn't it been a lovely day? Well, yeah, I, I said that. So don't, you know. Wait, what? Well, don't get weird and spoil it. Well, maybe I am weird. Maybe I've been, I've been weird all this time and just been hiding it. Maybe that's too much for you. It's more, it's too fucking boring. That's me, Tom. 
I don't think you're weird. I don't think dressing up like the doctor is weird, see? I think it's a laugh. So you're not weird. Don't try and be now, just... Okay, I'll see you very soon. Well, I can't, I, I, I can't pretend that I'm not feeling certain what things. What then? If we go to another convention, it can't just be as friends. I, I can't do that. So you're telling me I have to go out on a date with you? No, no, I, well, I'm not saying. You are? No. You're saying I have to go out with you on a date when you know I've got a boyfriend. No. Well, how's that going to work? Are you going to tell Jordan for me? Because I can't see him being too happy about it. No, I, I'm not saying you have to do anything. Well, it fucking right? sounds like you are. No, I'm saying, right, it's about me and it's about what I'm going to do. Right, and I'm, I'm not going to be able to go out with you and, and act like I just want to be your friend. Okay, because I, th I think... Um, I, I, I love you, actually. Oh, not now, no. <laughs> no, that'd be weird, yeah. But I'm saying, if we, if we gave it a chance... So, uh, if I want to be your friend and nothing more, then I can just fuck right off. Well, that's obviously not how I put it. Um, well, that is how I'm putting it? Well, if that's how you want to put it, um, who am I to tell you how you can and cannot put things? <laughs> well, then. Okay. This is me fucking right off. What? Oh, shit. I'm not carrying a Bernadette. I'm not getting itchy skin and bleeding gums and swollen ankles for a Bernadette. Grossing out Bernadette. Is that your daughter? Oh, lovely. What's her name again? Bernadette. At least if it's Can a you boy. Imagine that? If it's a boy, at least we're settled on that. Right. We're decided. That's a big word, I thought. I'm we very mean. keen on it. Keen, I think, is the word. Keen. What's wrong with it? Nothing's wrong with it. We like it. We like Eddie. Eddie. We love Eddie. Just not sure if it's really got much sex appeal. Eddie Izzard, Eddie Murphy, Eddie Redmayne. Right, yes, of course. More sex appeal than Eddie fucking Redmayne. I get that, I do, but... Edward Cullen. I don't think that's... He's a character. Characters don't count. Ed Norton. Eddie Zibrian. Ed Sheeran. <sighs> oh. Exactly. <sighs> oh, no. Yeah, you can't do that. That's what I thought. Crossing out Ed. Do you think maybe... I've crossed it out. Do you think maybe you're not ready? No, I don't think that. Why? I do think that. I don't know. I think yes, we're ready. You both said. But if we can't even decide on a name... No, don't start it. I'm not. Don't get all indecisive now. We're just making a list. Yes. We don't have to make any decisions now. And maybe we'll look at their face. We'll look into their little eyes and we'll just know. What if I don't know? What if I look down at my baby and all I see is Ed Sheeran? I think you're overthinking this. <sighs> Are those ladders in your tights or stairways to heaven? I never thought I'd get to use that line on a man. They're just really cheap tights. I got them at a service station. That is not where you buy tights. I'll bear that in mind. Can you do me a favour? See Superman over there? The one with Jenny? He's not with her. What's she come dressed as anyway? A medieval tavern wench, she says. <laughs> if this were medieval times, she'd be hanged for a witch. That's just Jenny being Jenny. Does it look like he's with her, Superman? Well, he has got his hand up her skirt, so... We broke up on Wednesday, me and him. Oh. Sorry. No, it's fine, honestly. I'm over it, but could you just... Look, I'm not saying flirt, but maybe look a bit dazzled. Dazzled? I'm not a total dog. No, of course not. And but... I am dressed as Wonder Woman. The least you could do is look at my pants. That's the whole point of Wonder Woman. You can see her pants. That's not the whole point. He wanted me to come as Lois Lane, and I love Lois Lane. <laughs> She's the reason I became a journalist. 
than they are the perfect couple. But given the circumstances as of Wednesday, I didn't want to match his costume. Superman and Lois Lane are a terrible couple. What? Why? He can't be super when he's with her. Well, yeah, but... And if she's such a good journalist, how come it takes her so long to work out who he is? Just because he's wearing glasses. <laughs> and when she does work it out, he just erases her memory. <laughs> yeah, but by kissing her... That doesn't make it any less controlling. <laughs> You're funny. Wonder Woman's much better. She can bounce bullets off her bracelets, burst a dinghy with her tiara. She's a fantastic role model for girls, and she's in a proper relationship. <laughs> what, with Steve Trevor? You know Wonder Woman's boyfriend's name. I've never met anyone who knows his name before, apart from my mum. <laughs> He's pathetic. He's a fighter pilot. He always needs rescuing. He can't fly her plane because it's invisible. Poor Steve Trevor. I've always felt sorry for him. I was named after him. You weren't. My mum just really loved Wonder Woman. Yeah, me too. She's cool, like when she spins and all her clothes spin off. My mum was more into her as a symbol of female power, so. Steve. Kate. <laughs> Didn't stick with the Trevor part? And that might have been overkill. <laughs> hey, so why Robin Hood? Well, he's a brilliant ethical hero. He steals from the rich to give to the poor. He basically invented the welfare state and the green movement. He was way ahead of his time. But isn't he always kidnapping Maid Marian and carrying her off on his horse? Not in the originals. <laughs> if you read the 15th century ballads, Maid Marian's a heroine in her own right. <laughs> you read 15th century ballads to get ready for a party. I like to be prepared. I'm not jealous! <laughs> really? What's it got to do with you anyway? Her and me, you and him. Oh, we can go on little picnics in the park. <laughs> It'd be quite funny if the mere thought of it didn't make me want to stab myself in the face. It's evil what you're doing to her. She does you no harm! <sighs> you like her, then marry her. Be so dear. I know you don't. Because you would never done it a lynching. I wouldn't have. You've treated me worse than a dog. <laughs> if I have, then take it out of me, not of her. Do you know what it feels like? What you've done to me for your own amusement. Uh -huh. It feels like you've torn all the skin from my body. It feels like you've desecrated. My, 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 my insides, he ransacked my flesh. It feels like that. The least you can do is let me amuse myself in the same way. I mean, fair is fair, is it not? You're twisted, Hitler. <laughs> well, if I am, it's because that's how you made me. Marry Isabella. Do what you want. With more misery on Edgar, you have to. It won't change any better! I won't be the only one who has to suffer from all of this. What do you want me to do? Tell me! What you promised. I can't. You promised me. You promised you'd never leave me. I mean, nothing could have ever separated us. Nothing. We were the children. It wasn't real. It never existed. Not really. If you believe that, then why are you crying? I've not broken your heart. You have. And when you broke it, you broke mine too. You left me. You left on. You uh, left everything. I didn't know who you were. Dead. Why didn't you, you come back to stop me? No point. Your heart had already turned sour. No! Yes! If he could fall with all the power of his soul for a whole lifetime, he couldn't fall as far as I do in a single day. I don't want to look at you. I don't want to touch you, but I can't help it.
We've only got a few minutes. Okay, I want to say everything then. Yes. Everything that I've ever wanted to say, but never really been able to say for some reason or another, and everything that you, Oliver, that you've always wanted to say, but never really been able to say. Right. Okay, I'll start. Right, whenever you're ready. I'm gonna start. Yes. You start. Right, uh, okay, um, okay. I, I love you, I do. Oh. I I'm very grateful for you uh, being with me, uh, indulging me, I guess, in all the little things that I, um, and I know I like to play the victim sometimes, and I like to sulk, and I like to punish you. Well, I, I don't like to punish you, but I'm not very forgiving. Yeah, keep going. And sometimes I feel like you don't listen to me, or, or no, you do listen, you do, but it's, it's like you have other cogs wearing at the same time, if you know what I mean. Like, if you were a laptop, you'd have other tabs open. Mm, keep going. Oh, and I don't like your brother. I think he is so paranoid about retaining absolute control over everything that he's actually, actually a bit rude, and also, also very hard to buy for on birthdays. Yeah, I agree about the birthday thing, but not the rest. Well, you said you wanted us okay, to just... Okay, I'll go now. Okay, great. Okay, cool, right. So sometimes I feel like, and I know I've said this like a million times, but that you think I'm shallow. Right, yep, good. Well, no, I do, I do. And also bad, it's like when we started, we decided that you were going to be the good person and I was going to be the bad person, even though sometimes, occasionally, I feel pretty strongly that actually, I'm the good person and you, you're the... No, no, carry on. Uh, it's good that we're airing these while we have this, uh, this fleeting window of opportunity. Oh, see there, just there, this fleeting window of opportunity. Like, what is that? <laughs> the way you say things sometimes. I feel like you use big words to make yourself feel better. Yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, can I jump back in here or have you got more to... Yeah, do it. Okay, bit, great, yeah. good. Just to say, this is great stuff. Real exercising stuff. What's a relationship if it's not moving? Yeah, I've got something uh, else. We've barely got any time left, so... So, in bed. Sometimes, sometimes in bed. Okay, I know that you do this whole love thing and you're staring in my eyes like right in my eyes while you're, you know, and it's a bit... And I like that you're so caring and intent on me, you know. It is nice, really, but sometimes I'm just a bit... Uh, I don't know. Bored is not the right word. Much faster now. Come on, faster, faster, faster. Well, well, sometimes I want to feel sexy and powerful, like we could be in basic instinct to bob up mountain, or, you know, I just wish that you'd have at me once or twice, you know? Just let loose. Just let loose and really give it something, cowboy. Right? I don't want to feel sensitive or lovey. I don't want to feel like my entire life had leading up to the moment that you just put your thing in. Stop, 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 stop. Love you. Love you.